Well, here we are back at the charts again. Um, I've just made another video which you can look at on this channel. It's about Forex brokers, and that was what I was really focusing on today. But I think I'll just do a quick five minute update of the markets. Now, there's only one story really, and that's dollar strength after a terrible CPI number, the core CPI increasing, and the uh, the overall CPI just more or less the same, um, which means probably more dollar strength and more. Uh, market weakness in stocks, commodities, gold, etc., etc. Basically everything except for the US dollar. So looking at the weekly uh, daily charts here, uh, we've got the euro, the pound, the dollar yen, the dollar index just out of interest and gold and the NASDAQ on the bottom right. Um, everything's heading down except for the dollar index and the dollar yen. Now positioning, um, I think we've got to be looking short I was trading long on the euro um, on Thursday and Friday, uh, which was fortunate because we had a rally, uh, and on we had a bit of a rally on gold, which I managed to participate in, and in the Nasdaq um, after the market started to rally straight after the CPI. But since then, everything's fallen back down again, and uh, well, we've got uh, an increased CPI, no um, indication or. Uh, expectation of a slowdown of interest. It might be interesting actually that the interest rate hikes coming up next might might be half a percent instead of 0.75, which means at that time we could see some bounce in some of these markets and some drop in the dollar. I don't know. Uh, I don't think anyone knows. Everyone's expecting some retracement in the dollar. Um, but there's no real fundamental reason for that to happen. So we've got to be looking to trade everything short except for the dollar. That means long dollar yen, means short euro, short the pound, short the dollar index, short gold, short NASDAQ, short everything, short, short, short. That's the story. Um, having said all of that, um, as you'll have seen in the last video, I have a very small position long on the NASDAQ right at this current level. Um, simply because it's a technical level and I can get in with a very tiny stop loss with the opportunity for a decent rally. Um, so we're looking at this chart here on the bottom right. Uh, so there is a chance for a, a decent rally back up to this. Uh, sorry, that's the euro. We'll talk about that shortly. Uh, so NASDAQ, for those of you who trade this instrument, maybe we'll hold here. I, I don't think so, but possibly. Um, otherwise, we're going to be testing closer to the 10,400 mark, 10,200, 400, which is um, right down, down about here, probably about 10,200, 2,000 to 10,200 to, 10, to, to 10,300. So another significant drop probably next week um, before we see any further opportunities to buy bounces. Bear in mind, it's possible always in a bear market that you get these, um, as they say, rip off your face bear market rallies, counter um, rally reactions, um, which we had on um, on Thursday after the CPI, that, that big move up there. So perhaps that was it uh, for now. And we should be heading lower, lower down closer to, towards the $10,000 $10, level. I don't know, or 10,000 point level. 10,000 level on the index, it's not dollars. Although when you trade it, you can trade it in uh, as it is. Anyway, it's all getting a little bit messy. You know what I mean? Um, if you put $10,000 on it, there's $10,000. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, but it's an index. Uh, gold. Um, look, if we don't hold here in uh, in the next day or two or three, we could be going back down towards the 1,600 level on gold. Uh, we are at the 78.6% retracement level. There was a bounce from there on Thursday. Um which hasn't held um, and crucially we fell back beneath this line here at about 1660 which was the support level and the previous Fibonacci level 618 level we're down at the 786 um, we saw a very tiny little bounce off there at the end of play on Friday but um, I suspect that we might see further weakness in there I've got a, a long position on gold as well but um, you know these are all just very tentative ideas which may or may not hold. I don't know. Um, th there was some talk that uh, there is a concern about jobs. Um, I expect that we'll see job 
numbers um, dropping. I expect that we'll see unemployment beginning to rise very, very soon, perhaps as early as Thursday next week when the, when the next week's job numbers come out. We might see a bounce in some of these instruments against the dollar at that time. Dollar yen, well, I think we're heading towards 150. Um, I'm very surprised that we haven't seen any reaction by the, author the authorities in Japan. The ministry and the Bank of Japan haven't intervened as yet. Um, I don't think they've really tried. Perhaps they're waiting for the 150 level. Again, I've got a very, very tiny short position on here, hoping for something like a 500 pip drop, which can take place in a matter of hours like it did in this last set of intervention over here. Perhaps back down to that 20-day um, moving average at around 144. We're at 140, almost 149 now. So we could get a, a quick drop. Um, the last time it happened was on a Monday morning, I think. So that's in, I don't know, 12 hours time from now. Perhaps they'll intervene at the opening of play tonight at the opening of the um, Asian session. So I don't know. It's not worth betting on that unless you're just having a very tiny speculative gamble. Not Nothing worth it. Euro and the pound. Actually, the euro held up rather well, funnily, um, after the rally on Thursday. It held up quite well on Friday. Didn't didn't drop nearly as much as gold, for example, or the Nasdaq, which is surprising, um, considering um, the problems that we've been seeing in in the UK and um, the on obviously on the ongoing problems in in Europe uh, with energy and um, and the unmentionable on YouTube situation over there in the eastern part. Uh, and then the pound also held up quite well. Uh, actually, this trend line is interesting. So I, I really don't know. You know, I should be bearish on all of these. But somehow there's some strength being shown in both the pound and the euro. And the pound, as you can see, has broken up through that trend line for the second time. First time it broke up through there, it fell back down again. This is the second time. And on Friday, we didn't manage to break down below it. In fact, we barely challenged it. Um, and that's where the 20-day moving average is as well, right on that trend line. So we've broken up above the 20-day and the trend line. And on Friday, when everything else was falling quite dramatically, the pound and the euro showed some strength. So what do we do? I don't know. I think it's best to stay away from the pound and the euro and the yen. Uh, that's basically all the currencies. Uh, and to see what happens towards the beginning of the week going into jobs on Thursday. And it might be best to just stand aside unless there's something really interesting that happens on intraday charts um, that proves otherwise. Mm, I don't know. I just think it's very, very difficult. Uh, dollar index. Watch. I think the, the clue will come from the dollar index. Now, if you have a look at the dollar index, um, you can see we're showing some strength again after that little drop on on Thursday after the CPI numbers and just showing a bit of strength again. But we haven't challenged that high um, at 100 and call it 114, 113.9, 8 or 9. The top here is at about almost 115. Um, it didn't rally much, the dollar index. Um, so perhaps there's some idea that we're going to see poor job numbers and that the um, interest rate increase won't be 0.75, it'll be 0.5. So watch the dollar index, a reversal of this candle from Friday and a break beneath this 20 period moving average on the daily dollar index chart will indicate that there is some potential for the dollar to weaken a little bit down to perhaps 110, maybe even down to 105, somewhere around here. I don't know. This will be interesting to watch and that's why I've got it up on my charts. Any break beneath there and a close beneath that 111, 112, call it 112 level, where that 20-day moving average is, where that tweezer bottom is, any close beneath there on a daily basis will indicate that it might be time to try start trying at least small longs on the euro, the pound, and shorts on the dollar yen. And that's the update for the week. Good luck.